Sero was done with alternative communities and their legal structure and everything, but after the previous one where I shared about the other community that was setting up and the video that they had done, uh, I'll play that clip in a minute, but um, he starts it off by mentioning that they've had all these problems pretty much with this one woman who he doesn't even say is a woman, but uh, he says he's not going to name this person, but then proceeds to put up uh, a photocopy of the judgment uh, against uh, this person to show, you know, we won, we beat this person. So he said, go and look it up. You can have a look at the uh, court cases. There's plenty of them listed. Well, um, I went and did exactly that. And what I found was something that I thought I would share. But I'll let this guy tell you his side first. One of the things that's interesting about this property is the fact that it's taken four and a half years to get through um, an enormous amount of, of, of torment and um, turmoil that's been created by in particular one, one person. Um, I won't name that particular person for this exercise, but it's pretty simple that if anyone goes to uh, the Supreme Court of New South Wales and finds numerous judgments against her, you'll find that there's a um, an existing injunction or 86 of them against this particular person that prohibits her from saying the things, the lies that she's been telling. But the reality was, is, is there has been one naysayer from the very beginning of this project, and in my opinion, and others, is that that person has been a plant to destroy the the community, if, if, if at all possible, from inside. She and others incurred a, a significant amount of costs, and I'm talking more than $700,000 now, probably more than that, closer to a million in, in fines and costs and you know, what has been four and a half years of just complete torture for most people who had even the slightest inkling of what we were trying to do and achieve here. We've been through every type of investigation you can. Um, audits, the, uh, we've had the police investigation, we've had ASIC investigation, I've had insurance investigation. I've spent two days in the witness box uh, in the Supreme Court of New South Wales answering every single question, not one single thing, not one was proven to be correct. Moving forward, the community, the, the people that are here. All right, I'm just going to stop it there. Um, as you've heard him say that it's pretty much one person, he's pointed out who it is. This particular woman is called uh, Gillian Norman. And the actions against her start back in 2017. Now I'll take you on to the New South Wales Supreme Court judgments in a minute where um, you can actually read the judgments and in the particular case he's shown, um, they won that. In the one before that, they lost. Now, in the one before it, uh, in 2017, uh, Gillian Norman was able to get someone to represent her in court and speak legalese and won. In the second instance where she lost and this guy's talking about how they've finally won all these things is that this woman on the aged pension part of why she was writing all of this in the blogs in the first place is because she felt she had just been conned all her life savings had just gone to somebody uh, and her and somebody else had put in, um, I think it was 120,000. We'll get into that in a minute anyway. And she was upset that the terms and conditions that were said to her had changed. And then I can't actually see it, but it looks like she lost everything that the accusation against the real estate agent where the that took the $120, she didn't have legal representation to argue the fraud side of it. And this is what the judge is saying. I think if she had had a lawyer there, there would have been a completely different story. And I don't know whether that guy would be sitting here right now in this video saying that they were successful. Because, because you're in the Supreme Court and it costs a lot of money even just to get 
a lawyer to go to this to an ordinary court but the supreme court i mean she she's an on the aged pension she's just lost everything that she's got she's got no assets in the first instance she was able to get someone to represent her but that probably took anything in all favors you know she exhausted every option so when the better funded boy brigade came along and started ganging up on her and saying no you're lying um she had no way to defend herself and they knew that and i i'm kind of a little angry because i know how male dominated and how much women get squeezed out these are look men are not mothers and mothers have a lot of common sense a lot of stuff that that we know that quite often doesn't occur in the male mind it's common sense stuff that it, it's part of the mutual relationship we're supposed to have together so when you've got a, a male dominated culture that you know it's my way or the highway and this is pretty much what they say to you you know this is how i got kicked out because as long as i was agreeing I, I was fine and I knew that so you once you get to that point and you think well you know if I have my own opinions am I allowed to have them so you start testing the water to see if you can disagree with what they're going to say um, with what they're saying if you disagree with it if they're going to you know alienate you because you're not a sheep anymore and that's exactly what happens so you have to imagine that I've already done a video and shown you the small town of Nimbin, how small it is, and it's in the country. It is not some major town with a major population. And the person that actually they sued, they also sued the Nimbin School Community uh, trust I think trading as um, Nimbin Times newspaper or something so they've got a small Nimbin newspaper a little circulation that goes around a smaller area it's not big and in this um, uh, newspaper or little article uh, this woman had written about her experience and her concerns and in the first instance in 2017 she was taken to court she said that basically these guys are trying to shut down her voice so that you know the problems can't be discussed in the community because these are of interest to the public and the community now as I said that the case that these ones this guy has just said that they have won he won virtually as a default um, judgment and when I say a default judgment she might as well have not shown up and judgment is just awarded because she never showed up because if you're trying to self represent in the Supreme Court you're gonna lose because unless you can pull out all those sections of the law and argue it backwards and forwards and this is pretty much what the the judge said you know that she needed a lawyer but she couldn't afford one because she's on the aged pension and she has no assets and I'm only looking at the judgment and there's a fair bit of information that goes into the storyline in uh, the judgment that goes with what they actually won but in the one where she was represented they lost and I dare say that the story in this circumstance would have been a little bit different had she have had any kind of legal representation and any way of defending herself she couldn't she couldn't afford a lawyer so she self-represented and in the Supreme Court I mean even I wouldn't try to do that with what I know because I I know that everything is so legalese that it has to fit within all these certain parameters and um, look in one 
instance, I self-represented myself in court and I pretty much got the same thing from the judge. They understood my argument, then asked me to use laws and, well, once that came in, it was like, well, <laughs> you know, I'm out the window because I had not prepared for that side of it. I didn't know how to, I'd made my statement and, and but I didn't know how to back it up with all the different laws and all the components. Uh, I didn't think it would be necessary because this was the first time I'd ever been to court and um, faced anything. And I certainly wasn't going to, to get a lawyer because I've, I've got lawyers before for other things. And there's only one winner when you go to court and that's the lawyer. They suck up your money. And as I found out in a previous case where I got a lawyer to represent me, I got really angry with him. I said, I'm paying you to represent me to argue my case. And he said, no, you'll pay me to argue against certain things and get certain things, you know, diminished for you or whatever. I said, no, I'm paying you to put forward my perspective. And he said, no, you're paying me to put forward the law. And I thought, well, so if I want to put forward my perspective, <laughs> I'm going to have to do it myself. So I thought, well, yeah, I'll, I'll do it myself. So the next time I had a, a legal problem, I thought, yeah, I'll do it myself. All right, so I'm a little bit smarter now. I've, I've been there, done that, and realised I was not prepared. And that was just in a magistrate's court. This is not the Supreme Court where, um, don't take this as fact, but I'm pretty sure you need a barrister. Now, I've talked about this Morgan guy before. In a couple of videos he's been doing recently, he's been talking about engaging a barrister. And the first thing that when someone says, uh, you know, about engaging a lawyer, I think, well, where are you getting the money for that? Because that costs a lot of money just to engage them, just to talk to them. I mean, just one phone call could cost you a hundred dollars, you know. So where did you get the money for that? But if you're dealing with a barrister, double, triple, whatever, I mean, there's so much more money and it's a completely higher level of context. So. This guy that supposedly has never paid taxes and, you know, he's always freeloaded around, oh, sorry, exchanged energies. Where does he get money to pay to go talk to a barrister? And for what legal action is he intending to take? Where's he getting the money for that? Because if you're one... You're going to have to, to even think about talking to a barrister, you need to have thousands of dollars in your pocket just to get in the door. Then you're going to have to um, go through the whole process of back and forth, back and forth. I mean, you need to plan plenty of money. I mean, seriously, probably at least 50000 in your head, you'd have to say, well, I'm going to need that at least. And this guy says that... Um, nearly a million so it was he said uh, around 700 in 700,000 in uh, costs and fines which uh, when you sue and you put in I want the other person to pay for the costs that they've put me through that's what they talk about when they talk about costs so if um, you put in an application to get your costs paid if you win the person that lost has to pay the cost of you going to court so they got 700,000 worth of costs and 300 he said nearly a million now I don't know about you but um, the person they've sued this one naysayer this one woman on the age pension that lost everything that she had how do they expect to get all those hundreds of thousands out of her how 
I'm sorry, but you know, when you've screwed someone over and taken everything that they've got, you can't get blood out of a stone. And the cost of actually going through the whole legal process, they've indicated cost a lot of money. These boys that were struggling with this land could have actually spent that money setting up the land and just not suing her. I mean, if what she was saying wasn't true, just leave it alone. But no, they spent all that time, effort and money, nearly up to a million dollars, to stop this woman saying what she was saying. And one woman, <laughs> an old woman, on the age pension that had actually believed and trusted and forked over money and wound up what she felt was probably short of the mark, felt a little bit conned, I suppose, and a little bit angry about it. And what did she get for it, for voicing her opinion? And what had happened? This. She got sued. Couldn't afford it they could where they came up with the money well as we go through the judgment you will see that um, it costs eighty thousand dollars to buy in and there's different people that are bought in and mentioned during the judgment so pretty much people that have paid eighty thousand dollars to buy into this place that's eighty thousand dollars now the company has that they can continue the legal action against this woman with and that's how they funded it largely with the the money that was coming in and they not only have that but I still don't understand how they own Sphinx Rocks Cafe and that little area there either that sort of you know the, you have to think that we're not talking about hundreds of thousands we're talking millions of dollars here this is a very big parcel of land. It's valuable land. It is not going to be given away. We're talking millions and millions of dollars and the businesses that are operating would at least all of those together be worth over a million. I don't know, but you know they could, how much they'd actually be worth. But I'm talking about someone or people, a business that is operating um, on a very large scale well, they're talking millions and their assets are in the millions so when they pick on one little old aged woman um, woman on the old age pension who's just trusted and given her money to these people so that she's got somewhere she can live the rest of her aged pension out on and well I'm sorry to say it but I really wish someone had gone to court and defended her because this I'm pretty sure this judgment would not have gone through in their favor and they might want to sue this little old woman on the pension too seems like they like women on pensions these boys this very patriarchal area that has got all these oh I'm right and if you don't fit in I mean, there are so many common sense things that the boys at this community that I lived at would not follow. Things that are dangerous to kids, and I don't know whether I mentioned it in a, the previous video, but they cut down a water tank, and a corrugated water tank. You know how sharp edges are of corrugated iron? Especially if it's facing up. It's not far off the ground and it's right in the area in the yard where the kids run around and play. All it would take is for a kid to trip and I just had visions of, you know, cut arms open or, I mean, at worst case scenario, you know, kids are small, their skin's so soft, if they fell in the wrong position, they could decapitate themselves. So as a simple thing, they had um, piping around, just put it around the top of the the um, iron so that there's no exposed edge and it's not rusting either so you can't pick up tetanus or anything if you did graze yourself on it and put it on there and I got told off for it um, apparently I'm over creating the place um, and I told them why I did it 
and they couldn't see the point in it so they pulled it off and then the very idiot that you know one of these ones that runs the place went out and sliced open his arm on it and I thought well that's just desserts isn't it and another example of common sense that they ignored that the, the cattle had got into the yard and trodden the ground down and I was out there because coming from farming stock I know if that dries out like that people are going to hurt themselves you can roll your ankles and fall over I mean yeah it's it's not a good thing so basically while it was still soft and could be flattened out I was just getting out all those indented hoof marks so it wouldn't dry uneven again what are you doing and I told them and it's like no nah, out of it it's fine yeah, a couple of days later, again, same guy, tripped over in one of them and uh, dislocated his shoulder. And I thought, yeah, just desserts. Now, that would have been okay, all well and good, but, oh, we had to spend the next couple of days listening to him whinge about, oh, boo-hoo, and it's like, hey, it was completely avoidable, and I'm so sick and tired of you idiots that can't use common sense telling me I don't know all of these things that could have been avoidable just by using common sense and I seriously think that's why a lot of women aren't in these communities because it gets to the stage where women get so frustrated with their stupidity and their arrogance you know I know better if they are thinking that they are creating a community of equality well how about equality for women hmm Anyway, so I'm going to just pause that for a sec. Sorry, I didn't mean to get on the thing about equal opportunities, you know, and sexism and everything, but it really is an issue. I mean, uh, there's a very big sexist element. Women are not considered equal. And I dare you, go on, sue me for saying that, these small-minded little people. All right, so we saw him refer to the Supreme Court. Here's Darwin versus Norman. And there's only, um, as you can see, there's only three that come up. First one's in 2017, and the second one is in 2020. And this one is number two of 2017. So when he says there's multiple, there's actually only two cases here and they are interlinked. There's not multiple. And in the first instance, judgment was um, awarded in her favour. Now, where it says number two here, now I'm only telling you in my opinion okay this is not legal advice or anything like that I'm just reading what's here and trying to understand what it's saying because his story of um, now here's this is the bottom part of the judgment or just see up the top it gives you all the the parties it tells you who the parties are in this case as it says um, the defendants are Gillian Norman and Nimbin Community School Cooperative trading as the Nimbin Good Times. It's a small circulation newspaper. It'd be lucky to even probably sell a thousand, you know, an edition. I mean, it's not going to a large population. So um, now here she says in point three that it is. Um, an attempt to shut down debate that is in the public interest and she also says that um, this is the legal representation she's on the age pension she states that she has no assets and that is due to the subject of why she was blogging these things so in other words as I've said uh, just before is that what I, I think has happened is that um, she feels like she's been ripped off and she's gone public about it and 
that's why she's also claimed that this slap writ is to shut her down so that it won't stop other people getting ripped off like her. You know, that they can still keep getting the money coming in just because she got it wrong and, you know, she didn't listen properly. Well, did she? Was she conned or was she not? Because clearly she lost everything that she had. But it doesn't matter at the end of the day because now she's got a judgment against her. She's got to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars that she doesn't have to people that are sitting pretty. And uh, take a good look at that video. And uh, the male dominance in it. If you're a man, you're going to get on really well in any of these communities. You will. But if you're a woman... Oh, you're going to ruffle some feathers unless you're a sheep. And if you're not a good little sheep, you're going to get kicked out. Because as I said, it's the common sense things. It's the things that women bring to the balance that the men don't want to hear. And they've got their own little fixed mindset. You know, I'm right, you're wrong. You've got to bend to my will, not the other way around. This is not the principles of a community that works and shares together. I mean, there's this illusion that you're going to end up in a community that is mutually beneficial for everyone, not male dominated by a few loud voices that feel entitled because they were the ones that brought it all together. And I'm talking about these ones up here named as, as plaintiffs. Now you have to understand that this action is deliberately taken by the owners of that community. That was a choice made. There was discussions made. There were expenses of it considered. The time, who they would engage for legal representation. So all of these discussions have gone on and they've gone to seek legal advice even before you see that they are a plaintiff on this page. So it's already cost lots of money and time and effort and talk. And you've got to ask yourself, why did they bother so much with one little old lady? Why? Especially when they appear to have just taken everything that she's got. You know, it's not like kick a dog when he's down, let's kick him even more. And it, 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 that's why I'm doing this video today. It kind of really annoyed me. You know, in the first place, I thought, well, they, they cracked the shits over something that was said in the Nimbin Times. Are you kidding me? Even most people in the town don't even really read that. You know, I didn't know anyone that really did. So, you know, it was kind of like, well, and I knew that it couldn't have been, there's not even a, a building for the, the newspaper there. I mean, it's just someone in the community doing like a community newsletter. That's pretty much what it is. So I didn't understand why he was suing her for her opinion. And uh, when I started to look at it, I did because her opinion was going to turn away a lot of potential investors. And the thing is, if you are so just and right in what you're doing, I mean, I've had plenty of people, you know, say I'm full of shit and it's bullshit. And it's like, I'm not even going to bother arguing. You know, you can have your opinion, but I'm not doing anything wrong. I don't care. So why did these rich guys gang up on this poor little old woman who had just been taken for everything that she got. Didn't they think they'd done enough damage? No, they did this to her to shut her up for what was done to her. She was quite right in section 3 where they said it was a slap writ. It's meant to close her down so that she cannot speak out. And it's had that effect. Well, if they can pick on one age pensioner and sue them because they speak out, 
they can pick on me too. I mean, I have got just as much access to probably as many people and can make as much impact on people to affect their decision in buying into this property as what she could. Well, if I had bought into it and been ripped off. And, uh, and was she? I don't know. Looks like it. It really looks like it. And seriously, this is why I did the other videos, is because it, there is so much politics that goes on in these communities. It's not government politics, but it is politics. There's power plays going on all the time. You know, and if you look at the the community video, it's always the, I own this and we never gave up this and this is ours and you've got no right and it's all, you know, argue, argue, argue. And it's all, I've never given up our rights and this, that and the other. And it's like, well, you know, if you want to talk about blood rights and connection to the land, I'm Aboriginal. I know my grandmother was of the stolen generation here in Tasmania, so, um, you know, you want to talk about blood connection to the land? Well, even if I didn't have any Aboriginal in me, I'm still Aboriginal because I've got blood connection to the land. I was born here. My blood was born here. I've got blood connection. So what hell does blood connection to the land matter? It doesn't entitle you to own the land. Nobody can own any of this land. And this whole concept of, there is a very big focus of, it, and in this, at the end of uh, the part that I showed you in the beginning, this one particular woman was responsible for them changing the whole, how do you get into the community rules? They tightened it right up, and you've got to go through very extensive process and at least a five hour interview. You've got to go through a five hour interview to get into a boys club. I'd put them through a lot longer interview to see whether I'd be buying into their club, especially since I'd be giving up my right to even have a voice because I'm a bloody woman and not a man. So I've pretty much um, explained the whole judgment and everything. You can easily look these things up for yourself. I'm not going to do what other people do and read through and give you all the nitty gritty bits and pieces. Because this one's a very short judgment. Now if you don't understand what a judgment is, it, after you've um, been issued a summons to appear in court, and the parties appear in court and you know you go backwards and forwards and do all that stuff and finally it gets to the stage where there's a judgment where all that evidence is brought together and a judgment is made and this happens in both criminal and civil cases uh, judgments and also getting costs with the judgments was also part of what I did at Dun & Bradstreet that if you have to sue someone you want to recover the money that they made you spend to recover it so um, not all of them are recoverable um, but a majority of them are so I'm not going to describe all that you can if you were curious to see if I have come up with something um, that might be of interest to you, you can go and have a look. Because I don't want to get too into it and name names and everything because the more you say about people like this, the more you can end up being lines on a paper and boys club going, oh, let's, let's spend a few years giving this woman on the age pension who's got nothing. Let's see how much we can take off her. So this uh, judgment here is quite a long judgment. It is not a short one like the one in the one before. But then again, the one before was a partial judgment. Um, you, 
you'd need to read uh, the next one to have a look at that. So it just goes down here. It goes through all the the different scenarios in the community and things that arose. Uh, it's basically the timeline of events, what has been said by certain people. Here we can say, uh, see that there's 80,000. As you go through here, you see various individuals that are bought up, like this one here, that initially paid 80,000 for her investment. And, well, as you, you can read the rest of it. But um, she expected that for that unit, she was going to get 10 acres. Then it was later reduced to five, then to three. Now she's bought into a community and the company is running it. So basically, you know, the company has said, well, we're now making it five, now making it three. It's like, well, I've just bought in to be a director of the company and if, if I'm getting outvoted, well, yes, it happens. I was buying in for 10 acres and it got reduced to three and now it's even down to 2.7 acre blocks that you can buy into. And I think they did that simply so that just like any good subdivision that they can allow for as many lots as they possibly can because I think there was one stage in the community video where they said there was something like over 400 lots. Over 400? Wow, that's a lot. So, um, and if you're paying 80000 for each of those lots, well, I dare say it's gone up now anyway. Just to cover all their legal costs, even though they are going to claim them back and get them back, as I said, you can't get blood from a stone. This is a age old pensioner. They're going to be, they'll never get the money back off her. She'll be dead and buried and they'd, they'd still be taking money out of her pension for it. I mean, come on. What kind of men are you? What kind of a community are you trying to build that you do that to a little old woman? I'm kind of disgusted, really disgusted. But I'm not surprised. And I'm not surprised that, yet again, this woman here ended up on the short end of the stick. As I say, I'm not going to read it out. There's a lot of stuff in there. I haven't actually finished getting to the end and fully describing it yet in my own head, you know, what's gone on, because it there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth, and I'm trying to put it in the context of, you know, I'm there in the place and trying to picture and watch how it's going on so as I'm reading it I'm trying to make this movie in my head of of what it looks like and how it would have gone down because the thing about it is that when people are not completely honest even one sentence can reveal their lie because they know the truth and when they tell a lie they're telling the lie to cover the truth so if there's something not quite right in it the lie can actually lead you to discover the truth you know my ex found that out once he came home and he told me that somebody had said something and I said wow that's really weird and you know I said to him a, a few things about wow if you you know if you're going to say that the only way that you would say that is if you actually knew that the truth was this you know there's nothing else that would make sense otherwise he, d he did FIFO and he, he went back and he came back a couple of months later and he said, you were right. Of course, I had forgotten all about it. And I said, about what? And he said, what that guy said. You had it spot on. And, it, and he was surprised by that. It's like, well, seriously, you should know me a little bit better than that by now. Is that even liars know what the truth is? And if they're not a good liar, they will reveal the truth in their lie. And it, all it takes is a little bit of trying to figure out if I was that person and I knew this particular truth and I wanted to lie about it and I said that, what is the truth that I'm covering? 
and it's just like balancing the scales you know and I'm sorry but the world is just so full of liars that my lie detector is just naturally there to go off if something doesn't make sense and this is why I'm doing this video because the truth hasn't come out you can read through a lot of this story and as I said I haven't even got to the end of it yet and I'm I might even do another video when I do get to the end of it but essentially I've given out the warning about how these communities have been infiltrated by MK Ultra operatives, how they've been frustrated in their efforts and how some of them are actually being run by them. And this is a warning that I want people to take seriously. There's a lot of ego and there's a lot of stuff going on out there and they've put out this um, call to the community you know at this time of COVID when people are vulnerable and more likely to make these decisions without looking too far and you need to look and you need to consider that if you're walking around like in that guy when he went around with that tall pelican grey head guy streak who's so posh well you know uh, yeah, I've met his type in the community too. I can tell you that he looks like, oh, he might have been a doctor or a lawyer or someone very official. I can tell you that that guy's got a really different story. You can see it. It's written all over him. It's in his voice. It's in him. So... So I've got a little bit off track, um, I've uh, probably ranted on a lot about this, I'm a little bit angry, more than just a little bit, you know, I, I actually wish I was in New South Wales right now, I'd be, I'd be actually looking into this more and I'd be probably the one that would be looking at going to the Supreme Court next over what I'd be publicly saying because this is a serious risk to people it is something that people I know there are people that are going to be looking at it it's an appealing thing but do you want to replace one dictatorship with another just one boys club with another smaller boys club that's even got a smaller mindset And take a good look in the video. The guy that bought the property. Wow. The only time I ever had a gut like that was when I was about to give birth. That's my excuse. Fisherman. He used to be a fisherman, he said. Yeah, I know fishermen too. Especially down here in Tassie, you've got to be half crazy to go out on a fishing boat. They're a breed unto themselves, I can tell you. And uh, full of themselves think that their way of describing everything is right because I described it this way, I understood it this way, and I've said this, and I've stood up, and ah, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's like, seriously. All you need is someone to challenge you. Oh, but you don't like people challenging you, do you? Because this is what happens. Some poor old little old lady who gets ripped off gets taken to court and sued for everything she doesn't have. While you sit up on your 3,600 acres raking in 80,000 or whatever odd for the next sucker that comes along and buys in that risks losing anything and everything. Because tell me, what happens if after you've bought in and they disagree with your opinion what are you going to do to get them out then because there will be some way that they will get you out of the community they only want sheep they don't want dissenters or free thinkers they want sheep you don't think the same as them out so if you are in there something happens and you say, come on, hey, that's just going too far. You've stepped over the line. 
I guarantee you there's some clause in something you've signed somewhere that you didn't read that says they reserve the right to do what they're about to do and they say out. As I said, I don't know, it's only a guess, but it's it's something that I dare say they've done. They would allow a protection mechanism that even if you've bought into the company and appeared to be good, that if you turned out to be like this one troublemaker, this one naysayer, this one person that perhaps spoke the truth, they need to be able to um, find a way to get rid of you so that you can't disrupt the rest of the community, that you can't corrupt the rest of the community with your wrong thinking. And yes, wrong thinking. Again, as I'm trying to get across to people, these communities have all got their own set of rules. You have to abide by their thinking. They don't have to abide by yours. And you need to remember that. That you are giving up your voice to a certain degree to become a sheep to a shepherd that has laid down the rules. And you might, as a shareholder, be able to say, well, look, in the shareholders meeting, I'm going to um, put forward that you know, certain things and changes be made. But all the other shareholders that happen to be male think that's a stupid bloody idea and you're never going to get anywhere. Your voice is never going to be heard. So when I say be prepared to give up your voice, especially if you're a female. But if you're a man, I suppose you can get along pretty well. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but even though it's a lot of men out there that you see speaking out against the system, it's actually the women that have got the common sense. We're more the doing in the real life, not talking about it online. And that's where the whole internet is outbalanced by all these male voices putting forward their perspective. Well, I'm sorry, some of them just need a little bit of a whoosh, 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 a couple of slaps around the face, wake up. You know, just because you got to age 50 or 60. But my dad died at 63 years of age. And he didn't learn anything through his whole entire life. Nothing. He, he was an alcoholic his whole life and he died an alcoholic. And he died dumber than what I remember him when he had a job working at the Stinkworks down here. So... Age doesn't necessarily mean you are wise. And sprouting new age philosophies and oneness and working together also doesn't mean that that's the philosophy that's in practice. In real life, people don't want to give up the control that they've worked and fought hard for. And in this circumstance, spend hundreds of thousands, millions, millions of dollars to get where they are. Do you think that you're going to come in with your $80,000 and be worth more than them? Uh-uh. You have to be accepted you know, to become a member. This is a club. You have to be accepted. And it's a club that's owned by business. Now, there is another... Um, another individual that's involved with this and it's kind of a little bit shonky that that you know raised a few flags for me is that the last video he did is describing the setup of this other community which I'm kind of assuming was absorbed into this big community I don't know because he's involved with this community and the one I'm talking about here is the um, Buller Buller Trust and this Mark Darwin. Now, in, he disappeared after putting out that video, did nothing more, and then um, he came back a couple, uh, in 2018. This is from his YouTube channel. And he put out a video to sell his car. And he said that he's had the car for the last two years, but it's been in 
storage um, over a year of that because he went to England. So here he is trying to set up this community and he's disappeared to England. It's like, that's a bit strange. And I'd actually found that out before I found out that this Gillian Norman was a little old pensioner that had bought, bought into it and been ripped off. So, um, yeah, well, that's kind of my assumption of it. It's I'm not saying that's actually the case. So um, I'm trying to follow the story here. But there's there's all these these males that have got I don't know where they get access to money. I mean, we're talking about, as I said, millions of dollars. You know, most of us would have a hard time coming up with enough to even get a deposit for a house, let alone millions of dollars to buy three thousand six hundred acres. And I'll tell you what, the guy that did end up buying it, that used to be a fisherman, he must have been a bloody good fisherman. I could tell you something about fishermen and where they go to islands and what they do on those islands and how they make extra money down here in Tasmania, but that's a different story and I won't go into it because um, hmm, he must have had a successful fishing business. Let's leave it at that, eh? And this is the second part of um, this one that was started in 2017 just to show you that um, just what they are. If you wanted to go have a look at the case and read through the stories yourself, I haven't even read this one yet. Um, that seems a lot longer. It might change the story I've told so far and that might be a lesson for me to open my mouth before I know everything. But I just wanted to put it out there because um, something is... I mean, the fact that I'm even looking at these in the first place is has got me, why am I so focused on this? Why am I so bothered by all of this? And, uh, I mean, it doesn't even affect me. I'm not even in New South Wales anymore. But I just see so many people that are just going to fall into this trap and be en end up with nothing. And not even a home because one thing they do make very clear you buy into the land but it remains the property of the company you don't own it all right you're buying into the company so if as i said there's a clause that they can kick you out of the company you're going to walk away with nothing. You're not going to have a home. And, and ultimately, it wasn't the money that you wanted. It's the home. It's that little piece of land, that house, and leave me alone. Let me live my life in peace. That's what you wanted. And you're never going to get that as long as someone else holds control over the land. It's never going to happen. Because you're going to just have to find what, what people are doing now, agreeing with the government saying what they're saying because they're the ones that have all the power and rules over us. Well, and we can't afford to fight them. We can't afford to get a solicitor or a barrister. And most of us, even though ignorance is no excuse, most of us have got no clue how to find all those laws to defend ourselves? If you can't go to court and defend yourself without a lawyer, there is something wrong with the legal system. Now in this case, the defendant, which is actually, she sued them, them in this instance, I think, um, and she lost. Oh, hang on. All right, now I'm not going to explain these things, as I said. So the parties involved, these people here. The parties here involved, 
but uh, is rather an interesting story because there were actually four plaintiffs and only two are mentioned here and it will tell you down here that um, one of them was a no-show and never showed up and the other one pulled out and it was only these two that were left so there's um, as you read through the judgment though you can actually figure out who the other two plaintiffs were but they should I don't know why they're not marked there because even though they um, pulled out of the case they were still part of it and they should be listed like as as they were here where um, because the uh, first and the second defendants the first one was a no-show and the second one pulled out or it might have been vice versa whichever it was so basically um, judgment was awarded um, oh hang on so I've got that the second no I've got that all wrong there um, all right now let me try and explain that without confusing you the defendant is Gillian Norman she's the first descent, uh, defendant and the other one that again isn't named here should be is the Nimbin Nimbin Community School Cooperative but because those parties have pulled out but again they still should be named because a judgment has been given here instead of the plaintiffs see here it says judgment for the third plaintiff against the first defendant so that means that both the first and second guys these two Adrian and Philip were awarded two hundred thousand dollars each by the judge because of what this little old lady said and in the other two instances the um, judgment for uh, the first and second defendants against this, the fourth plaintiff so that's actually saying that because that person was a no-show or withdrew or whatever that the judgment is for the defendant or for Gillian so she won that particular part because the other person was a no-show or withdrew so that's a lot of money for someone on the age pension that's just lost all the money for two hundred thousand dollars to one guy Adrian and two hundred thousand dollars Philip the other guy who would be representing the company so the company would get four hundred thousand dollars out of that and I don't actually see here he um, the first defendant is to pay the second and third plaintiffs costs of the proceedings so that's 200 each plus costs which he said um, ended up to be nearly what 700,000 and up to a million so this woman has had a judgment against her now for four hundred thousand dollars I wonder how Centrelink's going to deal with that what they're going to do with her age pension how they'll take money out of her pension because you've got nothing to take they can't take any of her assets and sell them off to even recoup any of that money she's got nothing they took everything that she had or did they I don't know I'm going to read through this and really try and find out I'm almost curious to try and catch up with a few people I know in the area to see if they know what happened get a bit more of the inside goss you know other sides of the story that it's a rather interesting story they start telling here and uh, I spent a couple of hours trying to follow it and uh, picturing who these people were where they come from what they were doing and also trying to picture it because this is um, back in the time this would have been just around the time I knew this guy out of the community now I knew that there was some internal politics going on in the community he was at and there was um, a lot of stuff I didn't listen to I wished I had now 
because he was he was kind of bitching on a lot about all the the stuff ups and um, you know but I don't know what specifically as I said I didn't listen so I can't tell you something I didn't listen to I wished I had and uh, yeah kicking myself now because I do know that um, this guy that um, is in this other community was was fairly influential because he was Aboriginal and I mean yeah, yeah Aboriginal you got a ticket to ride and even though as I said that um, my grandmother was of the stolen generation I can't prove it and uh, she was white enough to pass off as white they even called her last name Blanche White French for white <laughs> it was a real real corny name but um, the thing is I've got Aboriginal in me so what it's a small portion of me it's not who I am and most of these white people that I've seen claiming to be Aboriginal it's like you are more of something else why are you you know focusing on a very small percentage of your heritage like I've got a small percentage of Aboriginal in me why would I make that the whole of my life I'm all of it not just Aboriginal I'm very very English and Irish and all those other things you know back before they came here as farmers anyway so blood connection to the land tribe color race who gives a shit really the land doesn't doesn't care what color we are so we should stop giving a shit about what color we are and making it an issue too because the, the divide about colour is still in existence because there are people making it an issue. Seriously, if you just shut up and stop making it an issue, it'd stop being one. But, oh no, we're not going to stop because we've been hard done by. Well, grow the fuck up. We all have been hard done by. Guarantee my grandfather was probably hard done by too. Should I argue his cause now? No. What's past is past. Learn from it, move forward. And that's all I'm going to say about that today. I'll talk to you again next time.